Okay, we're back. Alrighty, so I, I, technical difficulties, guys. Technical difficulties, but we're back. Okay, so I'm just gonna, I hadn't really spoke a lot in the last live, so that cut off. So we're gonna get right into it. So like I said, hello, my name is Kimberly and I am the Diabetes MP. And on Tuesdays, I like to come in here and give a Tuesday tip where I'm talking about like a specific question, maybe like a quick fire question that I can answer really quickly. Um, because it is February, it's Black History Month. I do wanna come and speak about the African-American with diabetes. As we all know, African Americans are in um, the ethnicity group that is at a higher risk for developing diabetes, specifically type 2. And I wanted to enlighten the community because if you haven't noticed, I'm black. So anywho, um, last week I spoke about sickle cell disease slash the trait as it relates to the A1C test. There were a lot of things in there that I discussed. Not only did I do a live, I also did, it's on my IGTV, but I also did a carousel that you can save and then you could just have a quick reference to, okay? Now, today what I would like to talk about, and let me bring up my slides. And again, just to let you all know, um, move my little thing over just to let you guys know if you hear me sounding a little lispy it's because I'm currently going through braces and I have orthofix which is kind of similar to Invisalign so you may hear me have a lot of suckering succotash you know but bear with me but today we are going to talk about cardiovascular autonomic neuropathy. Now you may be asking yourself, what is that Kim? We're going to get into it. And why is this important to know when you're treating the African American patient? So let's get into it. So cardiovascular autonomic neuropathy, this is where you have damaged autonomic nerve fibers that basically nourish the heart and the blood vessels. They innervate the blood vessels and the heart, okay? So you see in the middle of that that phrase autonomic. So think autonomic autonomic nervous system. Everything that that system has, think about that being a damaged system in relation to the cardiovascular system. So we know that our autonomic system um an autonomic uh, uh, nervous system is kind of like our fight or flight. It's our heart rate, it's our respirations, our sexual drive, all those things, you know? And so if you're having an issue there, those things are thrown out of whack. So with cardiovascular autonomic neuropathy, you have that those nerves and that nervous system is damaged, okay? Now, Let's go over here. This is one of those things that is very overlooked and it goes underdiagnosed a lot, especially in diabetes mellitus, okay? Be this is such a serious condition that it increases the risk of cardio, uh, cardiac dysfunction and mortality. Okay, and we're going to talk a little bit more, a little bit more about this, how you can identify this, what it is, how it uh, manifests clinically. But just realize something that realize this, guys. This is a condition that is very overlooked, but it's very common. Okay, it's very common. So, all right. So, what are your risk factors? What are the risk factors for a lot of chronic <laughs> diseases? You know, glycemic instability. So your blood sugar is out of whack. A person having, you know, not meeting their glycemic targets. Also, a person who has hypertension, dyslipidemia, and obesity. This is, you know, have we, I think it goes without saying, guys, that there's a common thread that we're seeing with a lot of chronic diseases, okay? And so this particular um, condition comes up just like the rest of the chronic conditions come up. Um, if somebody has long-standing diabetes, long-standing hypertension, this is something that they're at risk for. And that goes across the board. But what increases a person's susceptibility to this, what puts them more at a risk is like what I said, 
their diagnosis having a pretty long duration. You know, we know that people who have had the diagnosis of diabetes for a long time, they start to get some risks, some complications that um, people who are newer, newly diagnosed don't have. So that is a risk factor that makes them more susceptible to I'm going to re I'm going to uh, refer to it as CAN, but cardiovascular autonomic neuropathy, I'm just going to continue to refer to it as CAN, but that puts them at risk for it. Also, impaired renal function. Now, let's think through that. Impaired renal function when it comes to diabetes, a lot of times you see that with again, long-standing diabetes. Here's the thing and how I'm tying this into um, the African-American with diabetes. Being African-American does put a person more at risk for developing CAN, okay? Also being female, also having a, a history of neuropathy. And if you're thinking about it, I mean, if we're thinking about the, uh, the, um, the nervous system, if you're having issues with peripheral neuropathy, then you probably are going to have some issues with neuropathy throughout the body and other nerves systems, you okay? And so also just having a loss of heart rate variability, which we're going to be talking about a little bit um, later. So how does this manifest? How do we see it clinically? So the patient will come in, they'll have a resting tachycardia. They should have a normal heart rate, but it's fast and they're sitting there in front of you or they complain about that. They complain about having exercise intolerance. They can't do a lot of physical activity without feeling like, oh my gosh, I have to catch my breath. And it's not your typical, I'm out of breath because I've just done a, a, an aerobics class, you know, or a jazzercise class. Like they're doing minimum, but they're, it's almost as if they have, they're breathing as if they've run a marathon. You know what I'm saying? It's clearly abnormal. Um, people who have instability, cardiovascular instability when it comes to intra and perioperative. Those patients that, have you ever heard of those patients that are like, they've been told that they probably wouldn't survive a surgery? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, they, they go under, they have anesthesiology and it's just heart rate goes crazy. You know what I'm saying? Drops. Those people. A person who has orthostatic hypotension. And a big thing about this too is that this is also people who have silent MIs. And if you're not familiar with what a silent MI is, it's not your typical presentation of what an MI is. It's not the chest pain. It's, it's people feeling like they're nauseous. They're sweating, you know, maybe like fatigue, you know, but many things can bring about those types of symptoms. That's why it's called silent because people can overlook it but they're actually having a, 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 a MI, all right? So how do we diagnose this and how do we treat it? Well, the gold standard treatment for this are CART test, which is short for cardiovascular autonomic reflex test. Now you would have to send your patient out to a specialized lab because I'm pretty sure many of us don't know how to do those tests and we don't we're not equipped with that in our clinics but that is the gold standard and really honestly guys how you can treat it how you can prevent it is really treating the underlining cause going back let me find that um let me find that slide right quick but treating those risk factors the ones the modifiable risk factors making sure that your patient is hitting their glycemic targets as well as their BP and their lipid targets, you know, making sure that they are losing weight, you know, really putting them through intensive lifestyle modifications. And I've made plenty of videos over lifestyle modifications, what they really are as mapped out by the guidelines. Okay. Um, it's not just, you need to eat better and you need to exercise more. We really have to outline what that is. We have to give people a plan and that goes for all of us. If we do not give ourselves a plan and give ourselves actionable steps, just leaving it to the imagination is probably not going to be what's going to happen. And hi there, uh, Toya. Yes, I am on YouTube. I'm on YouTube at, um, my channel's Kim E, the Diabetes MP. 
And so if you miss some of the beginning part, I'm going to post this on my YouTube channel, but it'll probably be later on in the week. But, um, but you can find me there. Um, so let's see here. Let's go back to diagnosis and treatment. So really, that's how we prevent. That's how we treat. We treat the underlining cause. What is it that's abnormal? And we treat that. Okay. And to me, when I think about that, and when I think about all the different, like I've been really reading up on this, you know, and really kind of reflecting back over like patients that I have seen in the past. And I, I mean, I'll be honest, I've asked myself, I wonder if I've missed this diagnosis. Probably so. Because again, it's a very overlooked and underdiagnosed condition. And what can I do in the future to pick this up? And really, if we are initially making sure that our patients are hitting their targets, then we can prevent this, okay? But it's also good to know how it uh, it presents clinically so you'll know if you're dealing with a patient that's like this. One of the things too, before I end, I wanna mention as well is that um, one of the things that's very dangerous about this is that when it comes to like your exercise intolerance and I was um looking at a case study about CAN cardiovascular autonomic um uh, neuropathy it was presenting a patient who was exercising but their heart rate wasn't going up and that's dangerous you know the the reason why we sweat the reason why our body gets fatigue and the reason why you know we our heart rate goes up those are protective those are comp uh, compensatory mechanisms that our body does to keep us from overheating to keep us from blowing our top you know what i'm saying you know to to be able to pump out the blood and give the output that our blood our bodies need and if you have a patient who is exercising and they, you know, they don't know if they're overdoing it because most of the time people check their heart rate. If their heart rate is not having any variability, that's a problem, you know? And most of the time in those situations, the uh, case study kind of closed out basically saying when you have patients like that, that you typically want them to really pay attention not to their heart rate, but how they actually feel. Do you feel fatigue? Do you feel like you're about to pass out? Because that is not going to go away. You know what I'm saying? Don't rely on the heart rate. But that is a symptomatic or a case study of a patient that could have can. And so I thought that was just very interesting. And I also wanted to just share that with you guys. Um... Lastly, you know, I did have somebody to ask about where you can find me. Clearly, you know, I try to make sure that I give out a lot of helpful tips for nurses and nurse practitioners because I'm very passionate about making sure that we're bringing better care for our diet, our patients with diabetes. Now, the fact that it is Black History Month and African Americans are a part of a high risk group. I felt it all the more a responsibility for me to come and talk about things that you would see in a high risk group. Okay. And so if you find that this has been helpful for you, um, please like, comment, share, tag friends and all that stuff. If you want to read more about it, there's many articles out there, but one article that I really liked was the National Institute of Health, where it actually talked about finding and like the, it actually talked about like, you know, diagnosing how it manifests in patients and how to treat and all that stuff. And I think that that's a very good starting place. You can find that at, in its actual name, actual name is cardioautonomic neuropathy in diabetes mellitus. If you go to that website and you search that title, you'll find that. So please go read up more about it because it's very common, but it's very under, uh, under uh, diagnosed. And again, guys, I, I think I did good with making this quick, you know, uh, Sis got to go out here and start cooking for her kids and stuff, you know, and get ready and do the mom thing. I got off of work. I wanted to come in here and do this right quick for you guys. But if you want to learn more, go there. Also follow me over on um, YouTube, Kim E, the Diabetes MP. I will catch y'all next week for the next Tuesday tip. Bye.